Hey, I'm home for the holidays back in Indiana, so I thought I'd take this week to share a bit of Indiana history. Now, there are a lot of people from Indiana, or Hoosiers as we're called, that have done amazing and positive things for this country. Eugene B. Debs, Michael Jackson, Kurt Vonnegut, and Thomas Marshall all come to mind. This is a great state filled with great people all doing the best they can, but today, unfortunately, we aren't going to be talking about any of them. Instead, we're going to talk about one of the worst men to have ever called this state home. D.C. Stevenson. In 1920, at the age of 29, Stevenson moved to Evansville, Indiana, where he joined the Democratic Party and tried unsuccessfully to get the party nomination for congressman. After failing in politics, he joined the Ku Klux Klan and became a prominent member of the Evansville Clavern, which he helped grow to be the largest Klan organization in the state. Following his success in Evansville, Stevenson moved to Indianapolis, where he helped establish a Klan newspaper called the Fiery Cross. There, he increased recruitment on a massive scale, bringing in nearly 2,000 new Klan's members in Indiana every week in 1922. As a brief aside, it's important to point out that the KKK at this time was part of what's known as the second wave of the Ku Klux Klan, where the Klan attempted to legitimize itself and become more of a political organization, centered around strict morality, including increased enforcement of prohibition, as well as anti-Catholic and anti-immigrant sentiments, and to a lesser extent than the first wave, but definitely still present, anti-black racist beliefs. Stevenson's success in bringing in new members as well as increasing the organization's clout politically in the state helped him be appointed head of the KKK in Indiana, or Grand Dragon of Indiana, as well as head of recruiting in seven other states as well. At its peak, the organization grew to one-third of all white males in the state, and because all members paid dues to the organization, Stevenson also became incredibly wealthy and politically powerful. The Indiana clan was so powerful, Stevenson decided to leave the national organization and create his own rival clan, as well as changing the affiliation of the organization to the Republican Party. At the height of clan power in the state, the governor, the mayor of Indianapolis, the majority in the legislature, as well as many local politicians, were all clan members, or directly supported by the clan. It got so bad that it became nearly impossible to be elected in many areas without a clan endorsement, and running the whole thing was D.C. Stevenson. Then, in 1925, Stevenson began dating Madge Oberholzer, an adult educator whom he harassed into going out with him until she ended the relationship after two months. Then, on March 15th, after being tricked by Stevenson into coming to his mansion, Oberholzer was abducted by four of his bodyguards and forced to drink whiskey until she became ill, at which point Stevenson forced her at gunpoint onto his private train, where he raped and bit her nearly to death. As Oberholzer remembered it, when she became conscious again, she told Stevenson, the law will get their hands on you. To which Stevenson replied, I am the law in Indiana. She was then held at a nearby hotel when the next day she convinced Stevenson to allow her to leave and get some makeup at the store with one of his bodyguards. At the store she instead bought and took mercury pills and later began to vomit blood, but Stevenson refused to take her to the hospital unless she agreed to marry him. She died two days later and Stevenson was convicted of abduction, rape, and murder and sentenced to life in jail where even the governor he put in office refused to commute his sentence. While in jail, Stevenson released a list of government officials who had been bribed by the Klan, and several of them were arrested or resigned, and Klan membership in Indiana and nationally plummeted, causing an end to the second wave of the KKK. A small empire built by a madman had finally come crumbling down. I'll see you next week for more history stories. So it turns out our brains are extraordinarily good at lying to us. The original thing about the reservation was kind of back in a couple of kilometers was they lived uh, in bark, kind of lean-tos they called them.